Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Monday. I'm definitely feeling a lot better than I was. Um, I just kind of rested this weekend. So I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys about a lot of this Airbnb drama that's going on, if y'all don't know. Now, let me be the first to say this. I love Airbnb. I'm a fan. Um, one reason why I do like Airbnb is because it feels like a home away from home. And I travel with a lot of stuff. I don't travel light. Usually I have two suitcases um, one has my clothes, shoes, all that stuff. And then the other is my media kit, meaning my cameras, lights, podcast equipment, microphones. Like I do not travel light at all. And usually when I get hotel rooms, they tend to be small. There's not a lot of light. There's not a lot of room to like, you know, properly lay out my stuff. So I've always preferred Airbnbs, and I've been known to get two-bedroom Airbnbs, child, just so one room has, like, all my clothes and stuff, and the other stuff has my media. But I've kind of scaled down because the price has definitely gone up in Airbnbs. So the two-bedroom Airbnbs are not as affordable as they were back in 2019. So now I've been mainly getting one-bedroom Airbnbs. But with that being said, like I said, I like it because a lot of times it's a full apartment, full kitchen. I like to cook. You know, I don't always want to spend my money going out to eat. I'd rather go to the grocery store, buy groceries, and then cook it at the Airbnb. You know, there's, you know, just, it's a nice backdrop for when I'm recording videos or live streaming. So I prefer Airbnbs, but everybody's different. And so the new hustle now, and I know a lot of people are getting involved in the Airbnb short-term rental business. And we even talked about this at the Tea Time Unfiltered event as that being another hustle for people to get with apartment buildings and people who do short terms and see if you can take them over and Airbnb them. A lot of people are doing this and they're making really good income around the country. But there's a lot of ordinances that are being passed that people may not be aware of, especially in Atlanta. They are really starting to crack down on the whole Airbnb thing because like I have been sounding the alarm literally since 2021 about corporate entities buying single family homes. And right now what's going on is that we are facing a rental crisis. The rent around the country has jumped sky high, especially in major cities like Atlanta, uh, Miami, New York, Cali. Like the rent is insane. So, so many people can't even afford their rent anymore. And a lot of these homes are not being bought by corporate entities. And either you pay $3,000 a month for a two bedroom or you get out. There's literally no in between. And so what people are finding now is the issue is that not only are they having to deal with high rent from these corporate entities buying these homes and these apartments, they're also having to deal with the so-called Airbnb crisis meaning that there's not enough property in a lot of these major cities anymore to rent because half of them are going towards short-term rentals like Airbnb and Verbo, and others are going towards these corporate entities who have bought these homes. So a lot of cities are now trying to crack down, and they're starting in Atlanta, Smyrna. I know New York has been cracking down for a while. They don't like short-term rentals at all because New York is a very, you know, vacation-y city. They depend on tourism, and they want that tourism to go to hotels. So that's been a lot of issue in some of these major cities. So I want to go ahead and show you guys what's currently going on in Atlanta with the crackdown. Um, I know people who own, like, 10 Airbnbs, and now they're telling these people you can't own that many, you can only own two. So there's a lot of rules and regulations that are being put into place, and I want people to be aware of this. So check this out. More than 4,000 Airbnbs and short-term rentals could soon disappear from Atlanta because of a new ordinance cracking down on who's able to rent out their home. The compliance deadline extended just this week as debate over the new rules continues to heat up. Savannah Lewis reports. 
We have everything here uh, that a guest would need. Kathy McClure loves being a short-term rental host. This is part of our retirement planning. But under a new ordinance passed by city council, she won't be able to keep renting this Atlanta duplex for short-term stays. We live nearby. This is not our primary residence. Under the new ordinance, people can only own two Airbnbs or short-term rental units, and one must be their primary residence. You must be a resident of Atlanta, pay $150 annually for a permit, and pay an 8% tax rental fee. It also cracks down on noise and party violations, increasing penalties to several thousand dollars. I am kind of a good example of how extreme some of the interpretations are. There are just under 7,500 Airbnbs and VRBOs in Atlanta, according to the companies. 54% of owners in the city have more than two listings, putting them in violation of the new rules. This is how I make a living and support my family. Rich Monroe is president of the newly formed Atlanta Metro Short-Term Rental Alliance. The reality is there's going to be a lot of jobs at stake. The local economy is going to be impacted. Supporters of the ordinance say it'll help address unruly parties and make homes more available for residents who need a place to live. In Atlanta, there's been a 37% decrease in available housing rental properties since 2019. The deadline for short-term hosts to comply with the new rules was pushed back this week from June 1st to September 6th after complaints that the permit application process was tedious and confusing. The risk that the city is taking with a overly complicated process is that they will have a large number of so-called illegal units. The city is setting itself up for a failure. In Atlanta, Savannah Levins, 11 Alive News. Memro says they are working to convince city council to allow for a legacy option that will allow current owners to continue to operate short term rentals, even if they have more than two properties. All right. So you guys just watch that news clip. So one thing about Airbnb is that, you know, either you love them or you hate them. But there's definitely a dark side to Airbnb. And a lot of times that dark side is usually towards the people who are renting the Airbnb. But now we're starting to see a dark side for the people who are allowing folks into their homes and I'm going to address both but just to give you guys a backstory Airbnb was founded in 2008 by design students Brian Chesky and Joe Gibia and along with engineering student Nate Bilgeski um, they basically were you know couch surfing on each other's couches and you know just struggling like college students do and so they got this smart idea like you know since we're couch surfing and trying to find a place to sleep every night how about we pay people, you know, strangers? How about we give them a percentage to allow us to sleep in their homes? You know, they can be their own renters. And it really took off. You know, nobody saw this taking off. But by December 2020, the company became public and they were valued at $90 billion. And you can get an Airbnb anywhere. And it's really helped the travel industry, too, when you think about it, because people want to feel like they're in a home away from home. So it's really picked up internationally. You know, you can get Airbnbs in London and Germany and France and Italy, you know. So it's been a really good thing globally for a lot of people as far as the travel industry is concerned. But like I said, there's also the dark side, um, where things have happened where people have been, you know, the R word, sorry, I can't say it, you know, they've been assaulted, they've been robbed, and Airbnb has quietly paid off these lawsuits. You know, there was a victim in New York who had sued Airbnb because she was r and they quietly paid her $7 million. So they definitely do pay off people, so that way the bad news does not, you know, come out. Um, they try to keep everything very, very hush hush, like most companies. Now, one of the Airbnb heads of global operations, um, they were interviewed a year ago and they basically said this, people are naturally unpredictable. And as much as we try occasionally really bad things happen, we all know that you can't stop everything, but it's all about how you respond when it happens, you have to make it right. And that's what we try to do each and every time. And they are definitely right about that because as Airbnb grew, so did the number of dangerous incidents. Everything from crazy hosts, you know, hurling out suitcases out of windows, um, concealed cameras, you know, hidden cameras in people's homes, gas leaks, S assaults, and, you know, just various crimes that have taken place in and around these short-term rentals, even shootings. So, you know, and you can't control everybody, right? People are human beings. They're going to do what they want to do. So these people who run Airbnb, the CEOs and stuff like that, 
they can't be everywhere at once. They can't control the entire populace, right? So the main thing now that they're having to fight against is not even so much the craziness, but a lot of these regulatory battles that are now coming down the pipeline. So I want you guys to be aware of this. If you guys are doing Airbnb, if you guys are doing short-term rentals, that a lot of cities are starting to crack down because right now there's just not enough rental properties to go around. So a lot of people are like pissed. You know, is it rightful for them to be mad at Airbnb owners? Because at the end of the day, they're just trying to get a check. I don't think it's necessarily right for people to be, you know, mad at the Airbnb owners. Because again, everybody's trying to make money in this economy. It's hard out here, you know, but... I want you guys to be aware that if you do have these properties, that there's going to be more regulations. They're even talking about charging folks and making them get Airbnb permits. You know, it's kind of like what's going on. Um, it's kind of like what happened with the taxi companies versus Uber and Lyft, you know, because the taxi companies were more regulated. They had to pay certain fees. And then with Uber and Lyft, any Yahoo can just be like, hey, I want to be a Lyft driver, <laughs> you know, pay me. And so... It's, it's just the same thing. It's like the people are able to take control of their money and their investments and what they want to do with their property. And now the government is coming in to regulate. But with the massive housing crisis, I get why they're trying to do the regulations because you literally have people right now who are homeless and having to live in Airbnbs because they're a little bit cheaper than renting the rental properties from these corporations. So the housing crisis is a mess. But like I said, we've been talking about this for the past two years on this channel. Another thing I want you guys to be aware of concerning Airbnb is that there's a viral story. I was sent this while I was on vacation, so I didn't get a chance to address it. But there's a young black woman. Um, she decided to sublease, you know, part of her home for Airbnb. And a lot of people do that. Sometimes you can get a full house. I usually get a full. I don't want anybody there at the property when I'm there just for my safety. I don't want to sleep in a house with a stranger, but to each its own. So some people to get extra money, they will sublease, like let's say their basement, like the lower half of their home and things like that. So this young lady decided to do the same thing. So that way she could get some money to help pay off her mortgage early. And she literally got the Airbnb client from hell. This broad came to rent out the portion of the Airbnb for a few days. And then the lady was gone on vacation. She came back and the Airbnb renter is still there. And the woman is refusing to leave. As she's recording this video, the woman is rocking around her house being disrespectful, telling her, I'm not going anywhere. Deal with it. You can call the police. Then this big bitch has a nerve to start smoking in her house. And you can see she has white furniture. Child, couldn't have been my house, okay? Huh, not on my watch. Not on my watch. But anyways, y'all go ahead and check out this video. It made me so mad. Check this out. Hmm. Yo. Don't trust no Airbnbs, okay? So, I can't even talk right now. I'm so pissed off. I, I didn't even know this shit could happen, but this shit is real. This shit is really going on. Goddamn, I caught myself trying to find a way to goddamn pay off my mortgage a little better, a little quicker or whatever. So, <clears throat> I put this this ad out or whatever saying I was looking for someone to sub lease one of the rooms in my house or whatever. It was going to be a, supposed to be like this real smooth transaction or whatever. I was, went on vacation or whatever. The person was supposed to be gone three days prior to my return. <clears throat> So I'm talking to my housekeeper, whatever, X, Y, Z. She's like, yo, that person is still here in your house. What do you mean they're still in my house? They're supposed to be gone. So when I get back and touch down in the city, this is still here in my motherfucking house, okay? Refusing to leave. So I don't know what to do. I'm new to this shit. So I go down and I do up. Uh... There you go, y'all. Straight to the fucking kitchen. I ain't going nowhere. So deal with it. On top of her ass just intruding into my fucking home, she disrespects me. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I've been trying to do the the right way. I done went down there and got the, <clears throat> the, the all the paperwork that I need to do to get her ass evicted out my house, whatever. But that shit is a fucking process. I have to go through protocols and all the other stupid legal blase blase bull and then i just got them the police just like just left my house and i'm like get this out my house they're like oh she's a tenant now she's a tenant oh, there's nothing 
Fuck you and the police, oh, okay? This is my door. That's all I know. Yo, door. This is my house. How about you get the fuck out of my house? How about that's what you do? How about you get the fuck out of my house? How about you get the fuck out of my house? How about you get? Shit, always my shit. Excuse me. Excuse me. You can record all you want. All you want, but I ain't going nowhere, okay? So deal with it. This is what I'm dealing with, y'all. I'm Airbnb. So don't trust it. Don't do that shit. Make sure you know exactly who the fuck you let it to your house because it is some freeloading motherfuckers who would just use you. Out my house, and then I call the goddamn police. And, oh, she's a tenant. She's a tenant. It's not no tenant in my house. What you mean? This is supposed to goddamn be gone. That's what she's supposed to be. She's supposed to be gone. The fuck? Is this call the police? Call the police, cause I ain't going nowhere. Don't touch that door, or I'm calling the police on you. And they're gonna arrest you. Call it. Did you just? Are you smoking in my house? Are you I this All right, y'all just saw that video. It's the audacity for me. It's the audacity of you renting through Airbnb a set amount of stay days, okay? You're supposed to be there for about 3 days and the fact that you're still here and you're talking shit to me in my own home, going in the refrigerator as if you paid for my groceries. I I don't I don't even understand how this is okay. And the fact that she has to go through an eviction process and pay anywhere from four to seven thousand dollars to evict this woman is beyond me. But I want people to be aware of this because it seems like folks are going crazy. I, I just don't know what's going on with the world. It's like the world is just going batshit crazy. Before we had to worry about going to an Airbnb and feeling safe and making sure that there's not cameras and crazy people in the closet. But now the Airbnb hosts have to worry about the clients who are booking the homes. Feeling like, well, I ain't got nowhere else to live, so I'm just going to stay here. And there's nothing you can do. And before y'all think this is a joke or a spoof, as I was researching more information, this is really happening around the country. This is not the first time. So this has happened to other people. So people need to be aware of this, that you can Airbnb your home out and folks can just choose not to leave. Get that camera out of here. Hey, I don't hey, want hey. to be filmed. Hey, Get it out. Come on, come on, lady, lady. Get it out. Get it away from here! Pushing, threatening, and using homophobic slurs, things escalated quickly in front of a home on King William in downtown Hamilton. We obviously weren't able to speak with the people inside the unit, but I did see a young woman sitting on the porch in front of the door and asked her to come tell us her side of things. She wouldn't answer our questions. At this point, the, their reaction is, we're not moving out, we're not paying, sue us. Homeowner Adriana Ostapenko says the couple paid for a two-week stay and a four-day extension, but have not paid for the last five days. They've given uh, many, many reasons, uh, none of which, you know, are, <laughs> are, are fair reasons. They didn't have the money, they were asking for somebody's help. Ostapenko contacted Airbnb support on Sunday, and the company offered to help writing in a message if the guest refuses to move out, we can definitely help you with that. But days later, the promised help has still not materialized. Ostapenko writing yesterday, we are in desperate need of help here. Airbnb didn't tell us how exactly they will help, but said, our community support team has suspended the guest's account, and we are working with the host to support her in getting this matter resolved. They have no rights as a tenant. There's no lease. The landlord and tenant board has already said this is not their jurisdiction. Real estate lawyer Mark Wiseletter says it's like a hotel guest who won't leave, advising Ostapenko to change the lock and remove the guest's possessions. The police has told us we are not allowed to do that and they will come and uh, uh, arrest us if we try anything like changing the locks. It is an Airbnb backfire. A California landlord cannot get rid of squatters who rented her condo. She is caught in a legal limbo. The case highlights the downside of the growing online marketplace. That property owner sat down with Terry Okita to show us how the nightmare unfolded. I do have a condo down in Palm Springs. Corey Shagel started feeling uneasy rental. soon after two brothers rented her vacation condo in late May. They found the place on the home sharing service Airbnb and arranged to stay for six weeks. Her first red flag 
they didn't pay in full. And then a bombshell. And when you got the text that said, I'm not leaving, legally I'm allowed to stay here now, mm -hmm. what were you thinking? My heart sank and it just felt like I was being bullied. Um, it felt like I was being threatened and bullied and trying to be intimidated. Shagel did some research and discovered that under California law, a person who lives on the property for more than 30 days is considered a tenant. News. The company says, we've worked closely with this host and provided our full support. We've refunded the complete cost of the reservation and we're working with her to cover additional expenses. In the new world of the so-called sharing economy, new technology can easily connect private parties to help make ends meet. But businesses like Airbnb, Uber, Flipkey and Lyft are operating in unchartered territory. They're growing much faster than regulations and laws can keep up with, and different localities have different issues that they're trying to grapple with. In San Francisco, for instance, officials are worried that Airbnb is eating into a tight rental market, driving up prices on already high rents. And in New York, the attorney general raised concerns about hosts running illegal hotel operations. CBS News reached out several times to the men who rented Shagel's condo with no response. But Airbnb says they've been permanently banned from the service. I wouldn't wish this on anybody. It's been a really stressful roller coaster ride, but I do think that others can can learn from like this cautionary tale. So now that was just a few Airbnb nightmares, right? So these are people who have Airbnb accounts who welcome these people into their home. But what happens when you go out on vacation, right? Let's say you're going to, you know, Essence Fest or you're going to the beach with your family and you leave. You know, you've announced it on Facebook, you know, vacation time. I need a break. And then you come back from vacation and someone is in your home. This is also happening right now with everything going on in this crazy rental market. People are going through Facebook and social media and seeing who's on vacation. And they are basically breaking into people's homes and just squatting. Just squatting. So, you know, you can be gone a week or a month. You come home. There's people in your home, in your bed, just having a good old funky time. So the this whole rental crisis, it's getting crazy out here. So if you guys do not know what's going on, I am here to educate y'all because this is a hot mess. Check out this story. When in green belt comes home from vacation to find all of her belongings gone and two people laying in her bed. Yeah, wild story, frightening here. Police are asking for help to find the two suspects involved. Paris Jones is live in Greenbelt. And Paris, you actually spoke to this victim who I imagine is still pretty shaken up over this. Yeah, that's right. And she told me when this was going down, the male suspect got physical with her to stop her from leaving or calling the police. She says this was such a scary experience that she's been having nightmares. Coming back from vacation to strangers on her bed. Not only were they in my home, everything in my home was gone except for my bed because he details how he loved my bed so much. Um, and I'm like, who are you? And he says my name. He like, you didn't pay your rent. I'm like, what are you talking about? I paid my rent. We're concealing the identity of the woman who stays in this apartment for her safety. But she tells us at first she tried to leave. But the man you see in the video stopped her. He tackles me um, and I'm like, Sir, are you, this is my home. You, you're not going to let me leave. He's like, no, I'm just saying you're not going to call the police. I'm just saying you're not going to call the police. I'm going to give you an apartment. You're just not going to call the police. She says he eventually calms down, so she starts recording him as he's packing his things and explaining how he got in. Please show me how you got in. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you step by step. Because there's three ways you can get in, in, in your apartment. You everything in Yes, please get all your things. I want you to do nothing behind. Nah, we wouldn't. I'm gonna tell you how. I'm gonna tell you how nobody can ever come here without the key. I can't believe. It's it's a learning experience. Three ways we get in. Mhm. Uh, it's been almost a month since this happened, and she tells me she still doesn't know where her belongings are close to $50,000 worth. She says she's still in disbelief. Like, I just couldn't believe this was happening to me. I see this on TV. They really just took over my apartment. I was just trying to remain calm because I just, but at the same time, I just couldn't believe this was happening to me. I come home and literally two people are in my bed, like relaxing. So I went to look up some information um, 
for people so that way you don't find yourself in this situation. I want y'all to look at this as a cautionary tale. So before you start doing the whole Airbnb thing, please check out your tenant laws in your state because these tenant laws are different in every state. Make sure you understand your tenant laws before you list your home on Airbnb, okay? And you should also be very picky about who comes into your home. Don't be so desperate to just have anybody come and stay in your home for a few days because you need the money. If you need to, you can do a background check. Ask why they're coming. Are they there for business? Who do they work for? Look for their business credentials. Make sure that they have a home to go back to in their own state. You know, what is their current address? What is their living situation where they're coming from? So you have to do your due diligence as the people who are coming into your home, especially if you're doing the subleasing thing where you're going to still be in your home. Because this is very frightening that there's somebody in this woman's home. I don't know if this woman has children or not, but I just don't understand how this is okay. I'm sorry, but me and my kids would have to jump this lady. Like, she'd be jumped by now. She'd literally have to call the police on me and my children because you're not going to be in my house eating up my food, telling me that there ain't a damn thing I can do about getting you out of my house. Me and my kids would literally jump her. I think my whole family would come over and we would just jump her, pack up all her shit, and throw her out on the lawn and then dare her to walk back in the house. It's the audacity for me. And the fact that this is another black woman doing this to another black woman, like, sister, are you for real? Like, this is not cool. As a homeowner or a landlord, make sure that you issue a contract and it clearly states the length of the stay and any additional terms for the visitors. Even with that contract, you still have to be careful because even though you have a contract, tenant rights will automatically come into effect to protect that tenant if they, you know, can make it seem like it's supposed to be a tenant situation. So the main thing is that you need to really understand the laws in your state before putting your home up for Airbnb to get extra money. Also be careful offering stays of 20 days or more because in some states, if anybody stays with you 20 to 30 days, that can consider them a tenant. That can consider them, you know, somebody who legally lives in your home and give them some of that tenant leeway. So you might want to stick to doing shorter term rentals, you know, like no more than a week. So that way it can prove that, no, they were only supposed to be here a week. This was not long term. This was not long term. They were not going to be a roommate, things like that. So for the most part, just understand the laws in your state. Do a thorough background on who's going to be staying if you're subleasing. And also make sure that it's not a stay longer than 20 days. You know, so I feel really bad for her. Um, I try to look and see if there's any more updates. I haven't seen any more updates on this situation. Hopefully she got that woman out of her house. But, I mean, it's just ridiculous now. So I just wanted to talk about this and let you guys be aware of some of the things that are going on with Airbnb. If you guys are interested in doing that and earning extra money, it is a good source of income. Like I said, I know several friends who do it. They own like one friend, like I said, owns 10 Airbnb properties. He's making bank. You know what I'm saying? I know people who are business partners and they're going half on renting apartments and then Airbnb in them out. So you can definitely make money, but then also understand the dark side of Airbnb, meaning that, you know, some of these people that you rent your spot out to can get you in legal trouble if something happens at the property. Or you may have some people now who are refusing to leave because the rental crisis is so bad now that you have people who are literally squatting. So it's getting that crazy out here. So y'all be careful, do your research, do your due diligence. Love you guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. I will talk to y'all later. Have a good day. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so tell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.